dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my lecture, COVID-19 and the skin. As you know, COVID-19 started in China and spread to most countries around the world within a few months. Now we have more than 6 million confirmed cases and more than two and a half million recovered cases. More than 370,000 died from the disease and the disease is detected in already 188 countries around the world. SARS-CoV-2 is the cause of COVID-19. Like other coronaviruses, it has a lipid envelope, a single-stranded RNA genome, and a club-shaped spike protein that project from the surface. The lipid envelope is a weak point in the virus and soaps destroys the virus when the water shunning tails of the soap molecules wedge themselves into the lipid envelope and break it open. That is why we recommend people to wash their hands with soap. This is an electron micrograph of the virus. The spikes create an image reminiscent of the solar corona from which the name corona derives. Now, how does the virus invade the human cells? I'll try to make it easy. First, the virus bends with its spike proteins to a cellular receptor called angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or ACE2. ACE2 is thought to be an essential regulator of cardiac function and blood pressure control in our body. The binding of the spike proteins to ACE2 is followed by the entry of the viral RNA genome into the host cells. The virus then converts the cell into a virus factory and utilizes it in producing new virus proteins and genomic RNA. In this way, a large number of viruses will be produced and each infected cell can release millions of copies of the virus before the cell finally breaks down and dies. The virus infected then new cells and so on. The COVID-19 virus is a dangerous virus because it is highly contagious and can at the same time evade immune surveillance. Why? The answer was in a recently published article in the Binance magazine. They found that the receptor binding domain of the spike protein has two states, a stand-up state when it wants to react with the ACE2 receptor and a lying down state or a hidden state for the immune evasion. The virus uses host proteases such as furin to change from the lying down state to the standing up state. They also find that the binding affinity of receptor binding domain of the spike protein to ACE2 is very strong, which make it more contagious. Because ACE2 is the functional receptor for the COVID-19 virus, 
It is therefore important to know the distribution of ACE2 in our body in order to know which cells are potential candidates for the virus infection. In a recently published study, the expression of ACE2 in different human tissues was examined. And the results were very interesting. ACE2 expression levels were the highest in their small intestine, testes, kidneys, heart, thyroid, and adipose tissue, and were the lowest in the blood, spleen, bone marrow, brain, blood vessels, and muscles. ACE2 showed medium expiration levels in the lungs, colon, liver, bladder, and adrenal gland. ACE2 was not differentially expressed between males and females or between younger and older persons in any tissue. The conclusion of this study was SARS-CoV-2 may infect other tissues aside from the lungs and infect persons with different sexes, ages, and races equally. The different host immune response to SARS-CoV-2 infection may partially explain why males and females, young and old persons infected with this virus have markedly distinct disease severity. A previously published study showed similar results but they presented more details regarding the expression of ACE2 in the skin. They showed that in the skin, ACE2 is mainly expressed in the basal layer of the epidermis and also in the basal layer of the hair follicles. It is also expressed in the endothelial cells of the blood vessels in the fibroblasts and myofibroblasts, as well as in the eccrine sweat glands, as you see here. ACE2 is also expressed in the oral mucosa, especially in the epithelial cells of the tongue. All the previous studies that I have shown you indicate that the virus is a multi-organ virus. It affects not only the lungs, but also the gastrointestinal tract, cardiovascular system, kidney, brain, nasal mucosa, oral mucosa, the coagulation system, and the skin. Now, COVID-19 and the skin. In the next part of my talk, I'll try to answer two questions. The first question is, what are the skin manifestations that have been reported so far in COVID-19 patients? And the second question, are these manifestations specific or not? I recommend this website of the University of Nottingham. On this website, they collect all published articles about patients with COVID-19 and skin changes. All articles are for free. The prevalence of skin changes in patients with COVID-19 ranged from 0.2 to 20% of all infected patients. More than 1,000 COVID-19 patients with skin changes from different countries are reported in the literature. I classify skin changes, which is observed in patients with COVID-19 into two main groups, exanthematous changes and vascular changes. Exanthematous changes include the following, articular eruptions, 
ماكلو بابولاي هاي اوبشنز هاي سيلا لايك بابلو فيزيكولاي هاي اوبشنز هاي ثيما مالتي فورم لايك هاي اوبشنز هير سم كوفيد 19 بيشنز ويز ايتيكايل هاي اوبشنز The atrial options affect mostly the tongue, but may also be acral localized, and also reported in children, as in this elf-year-old child. The atrial options make up about twenty-one percent of skin changes in COVID-19. They are not related to severity of the disease. And can be associated with fever. They can occur before or during the COVID-19 symptoms, and they have no specific histology. Sure, an atrial eruption can be a cutaneous manifestation of a bacterial, parasitic, or viral infection, or even a dioxide effect. However, during the pandemic, patients with atrial eruptions should be carefully evaluated for the possibility of COVID-19. Maculopapular eruptions. Here are some COVID-19 patients with maculopapular eruptions. The eruption can be hemorrhagic. And also occur in children and even babies, like here, a two-month-old baby. The maculobubular eruptions make up about twenty-three percent of skin changes in COVID-19. Are not related to the severity of the disease. Can be associated with fever. Can occur before or during COVID-19 symptoms. Histology performed on some of these patients showed interface dermatitis. These histological changes are, for me, not specific, as they can occur with other diseases such as drug reaction or other viral infections. Of course, maculobubular eruption. Can be a cutaneous manifestation of different things, but during the pandemic, consider please the possibility of COVID-19. Varicella like babulophysicular eruptions. The eruption looks like chicken box. Here are some examples of varicella like eruptions in COVID-19 patients. And here is the histology. We see the coolite changes of the basement membrane zone and dyskeratotic keratinocytes. And in this histology, we see a blister with giant cells and the coolite degeneration of the basement membrane zone. What is special in this histology? The coolite degeneration of the basement membrane zone. I didn't see this in the histology of herpes infection. Many of COVID-19 patients with this skin changes receive no drugs before the appearance of the lesions, and many of them have a past history of chicken box. For all these reasons, I think this papillofidicular eruptions can be considered specific for COVID. Nineteen. The cellular papillofasciculi eruption make up about ten percent of skin changes in patients with COVID nineteen. They are not related to disease severity. May be associated with fever. May occur before or during the COVID symptoms. COVID nineteen symptoms. The histology showed intraepidermal blister with vacuolar degeneration of the basement membrane zone. I think these skin changes 
are specific for COVID-19. Athema multiform-like options. Only few cases of athema multiform-like options are reported. As you know, athema multiform can be a continuous manifestation of different things, bacterial infection, viral infection, or drug side effect. But during the pandemic, consider also the possibility of COVID-19. Now, the vascular changes. These include the following. Perineal-like or chilblain-like lesions, porporic lesions, levido-like lesions, and acral ischemia. Perineal-like lesions. Perineal-like lesions are the most commonly reported skin findings and account for about 41% of skin lesions in COVID-19. Seen mainly in children and young people with mild or asymptomatic cases of COVID-19, this appears spontaneously on average after two weeks. Sometimes the lesions are accompanied by itching or mild pain. They appear on toes and feet more than on fingers and hands. They are asymmetrically distributed. Sometimes blisters develop on them. Here are examples, ethymetus, macules, papules, or plaques. Here with blister formation and here on the fingers. Here on the sole and here on the heel and here affecting a baby. We have few histologies of perineal-like lesions in COVID-19 patients. And what is available showed vacuolite degeneration of the basement membrane, dilated blood vessels and infiltrate around the blood vessels, and eccrine glands, as you see. For me, perineal-like lesions are a diagnostic clue for COVID-19. Some oocytes even called it COVID-2 or COVID finger. Perineal-like lesions may be due to microangiopathy of the cutaneous blood vessels due to a release of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Porporic lesions, here are examples. From this patient, we have a histology, and this disclosed superficial perivascular lymphocytic infiltrate with erythrocyte extravasation and focal papillary edema. The epidermis showed focal pyokeratosis and dyskeratotic cells. The changes are not specific and are similar to that seen in pigmented porporic dermatosis. There were no signs of thrombotic vasculopathy. There are only few cases published in the literature. Therefore, I cannot give more information about porporic lesions in COVID-19 patients. Levido-like lesions. Levido-like lesions account for about more than 2% of skin changes, may be transient and disappear spontaneously, or may progress to necrosis. The type which progress into necrosis occurs usually in severe cases of COVID-19 and indicates poor prognosis. In the histology, there is thrombotic vasculopathy. Here is an example of levido-like lesions progressing to necrosis. At the edge is the rest of the levido, 
and at the center is the necrosis. Here is another patient, and here is the histology, thrombosis of the blood vessels. Acryl ischemia. Acryl ischemia occurs in severe cases of COVID-19, most probably due to disseminated intravascular coagulation and indicates a poor prognosis. Here are examples of acryl ischemia with necrosis in COVID-19 patients. Conclusion COVID-19 virus is highly infectious and can evade immune surveillance. It is a multi-organ virus. Skin changes may be the initial manifestation of COVID-19. Acryl ischemia and levido-like lesions progressing to necrosis occur in severe disease and indicate poor prognosis. At the end, I want to say that many points are still not clear regarding the COVID-19 virus, and the coming days will reveal more of the secrets of this virus. Thank you very much for your attention.